This happened in the early summer of 2020, right when COVID was at its peak. I'm sure most of you can relate to staying at home during quarantine and not being able to go out. With the constant boredom of staying locked away inside of my house, I decided to take a day for a fishing trip. I live in South Florida, a place where it's notorious to go fishing. My state was still on lockdown, but I didn't care. I drove about an hour's drive away to Key West and went under a bridge to where I was sure I would get a decent catch. The waves were a little rough, but it didn't matter. Fast forward till about 20 minutes later, I'm still fishing, waiting for a bite. I look to my left and see what appeared to be a blue tarp set up behind one of the pillars of the bridge. I thought nothing of it, but for whatever reason I looked back and saw a man standing there looking at me. To be honest, he kind of startled me as I jumped a little bit and nodded my head as a hello. However, he didn't seem to acknowledge my greeting as he kept staring at me with this blank expression I couldn't even describe. By the looks of it, he looked homeless, worn torn clothes, and had a full-on white beard. Kind of like what you would picture as your typical old fisherman. What made me unsettled, however, was that his right hand was always behind his back. I pretended to concentrate on fishing, but I could still feel his gaze looking at me. Suddenly, he then jumps into the water and is swimming directly toward me. Even with the rough waves and the current from under the bridge, he was extremely fast. I was out from under that bridge in less than 15 seconds and got in my car with my foot glued to the gas pedal. I also left my stuff behind as obviously my life was more worth saving than that. I drove about a few miles where I stopped at a gas station for a snack and then proceeded to go home. What that man was going to do to me or what he wanted, I don't know. I assumed he was probably a dangerous homeless person who didn't like people near where he lived. The next day, I drive back to the bridge and try and get my stuff only to find it gone. Not only that, but the blue tarp and the man were also gone. Nothing was left. Except for an old hunting knife left on one of the platforms where the pillars were held up. After seeing it, I knew that's probably what he was hiding behind his back. Hey everyone, not sure how I should start this post, so I'll just introduce myself and start from the beginning. My name is Jared, I'm 17 years old now, but the events that I'm about to tell you happened about 5 years ago. It started with me and my grandfather William. We were going fishing just like we had many times before in our little boat in the middle of a lake. I loved those moments with my grandfather, it was relaxing, and he would tell me stories all day long. One day, it all changed however. A day I wish never happened. Still, after 5 years, I'm not forgetting any details. It's still burned deep into my mind. It started out normal enough. We gathered our fishing gear, got it in the back of our truck, and hopped in. We headed out for the lake and the drive went by smoothly. After we got there, we transferred all our gear from the truck into the boat and got in ourselves, letting the water carry the boat as we made our way a bit deeper. It was beautiful out in the water surrounded by nature, our boat gently rocking left and right. It was a great lifestyle and we both loved it. As we were casting our fishing rods, my grandpa telling me one of his stories. I noticed something glinting a bit in front of our boat. 
I pointed it out to my grandfather who decided to try and fish it out. Maybe it was a necklace or something. And we thought that it would be cool if we found something like that in the water. As my grandfather cast his line and started to roll it back, I could see he didn't catch the shiny object. He did catch something though. I could see it even under the water. As he pulled the object out, we could both see that it was a bone. Hmm, weird we thought, but nothing out of the ordinary. It was small enough to be a fishbone or something, so we just cast the line again. This time, however, the line seemed to struggle with the weight, but we could see the shiny object coming up. As he was bringing it out, I could see the object was attached to something bigger. But in the water, I thought it could just be some random trash laying around. As he got it out of the water, however, it all changed. What we saw in front of us was, without a doubt, a human skull. And there was a pendant attached around one of its eye sockets. My grandfather quickly tossed the fishing rod from his hands and he wanted to go home immediately. We didn't bring cell phones so we had to get back home to call the police. We made it back and in a rush we jumped into the truck as he sped off. It was slowly starting to get dark as we made our way home. The forest surrounding us. I thought I could see a shadowy figure running along our side in the forest on multiple occasions. I didn't bring it up to my grandpa however because it looked like it was a humanoid but running on four legs. And I was sure humans can't run that fast. So I just thought it was my imagination because I was scared. When we got home, my grandpa called the police and told them where the lake was. And that there was a fishing pole there too. Some officers came to our house to get a report. And we explained how we came across it. They thanked us for our time and were on their way as me and my grandfather watched behind. That night I had trouble sleeping. Waking up multiple times to see a shadowy figure in the corner of my room. Just for it to be gone after I blinked again. I woke up the next morning feeling tired like I had just ran a marathon instead of sleeping. I went downstairs and my mom had already cooked me some waffles for breakfast. Which made the morning a bit more bearable. I loved waffles. I finished up eating and headed outside to play with my friends. But I could never shake the feeling of being watched. When I brought it up to my friends, they would say that they felt normal and that I'm just paranoid. I believed them. I hadn't seen anything after all, and I was ruining fun for myself and them because of my paranoia. It still didn't help. In fact, every day that went by, the feeling became stronger and more frequent. It had gotten to the point where I didn't want to leave the house at all because I was feeling unsafe. When my grandfather saw me acting strange, he asked me what was wrong. I don't know, Grandpa. I saw something moving parallel to our car when we were coming back from that lake. I said, expecting him to comfort me and say how everything is going to be fine. What I saw instead was a pure look of terror and panic on my grandfather's face as he got up and frantically paced around the room. They followed us. I should have known they'd follow us. They never found that damned skull. It was a trap all along. He said as I saw a couple of tears forming in his eyes. Why the hell did you tell me this now, huh? Why didn't you tell me earlier? He yelled as I started to cry, thinking I had done something terrible. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me because I was scared. I didn't. I couldn't. I trailed off as tears coated my cheeks and dripped from my face. My grandpa didn't even look at me as he headed for the stairs. We're doomed. I could hear him mumble as he made his way up. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I felt guilty. I didn't know why my grandfather was so upset. 
Sure, I could sometimes see a figure in the shadows or feel something watching me, but it never affected me otherwise. When it was about 4am and I could finally feel my eyes getting heavy, I could hear some sort of chanting sound mixed with buzzing. Right after that, I heard a loud crash in the hallway. I didn't know what it was, but I was too scared to look. I stayed in my bed until I heard my mom scream loudly. I jumped out of bed not caring about the fear anymore, thinking something bad had happened to my mother. As I rushed out to the hallway, I saw my mother crying over my grandpa who was lying on the floor. When I got closer, I saw the reason she was crying. My grandpa looked like he had drowned. Blue color enveloping his skin, his clothes wet. I couldn't hold my vomit in any longer. I puked all over the floor, feeling nauseous and lightheaded as I passed out. I woke up in my room, my mother sitting next to me on a chair. She hugged me after I woke up and cried on my shoulder. I asked her if grandpa was dead and she just nodded her head. His lungs were full of water. No one knows how it happened or how he got to the hallway in that condition. It was all a mystery. My mother did however report that she heard whispered chants along with buzzing. After I told her I heard the same thing, she was shocked, thinking it was all in her head from the lack of sleep she'd been getting recently. We both went to bed that night, my eyes growing heavy as soon as I lay down on the bed. I dozed off almost immediately from exhaustion, but I was awoken by the sound of whispered chanting and buzzing coming from the hallway. Thinking it was whatever had killed my grandfather, I stayed in my room, silent as the night outside my house. That was until about 20 minutes later. I once again heard my mother scream, and then gurgle like she was drowning. I jumped out of bed again, but as soon as I reached for the door, the sound stopped. As I opened it, I could see my mother in the same state my grandfather was the night before. Blue skin, wet clothes. I started crying uncontrollably for hours until I finally found myself going to the phone and dialing 911. An ambulance and police officers came. I don't remember any of it. The funeral? Those couple of days went by in a blur. I found myself in a foster home right up until last month. They let me come back to my property because I was turning 18 soon. As I'm recording this, there is a sound in front of my door. It sounds like whispered chanting and buzzing. I think they are waiting until 12am when I turn 18. This is probably my last day here and I wanted to post this as a warning to everyone. If there is a shiny object in the water while you're fishing, turn around and go home. It's not worth it. This happened when I was in my late 30s on a fishing trip to celebrate a promotion I had received from my job. Throughout my young adult years, I've always been out on the water and never once had to come across anything or had a reason to be afraid. However, this one night of the trip took my fascination of fishing and crushed it. The night of my trip, I had stopped my boat to save fuel and found myself on my boat watching over the ocean. It was a quiet and calm night and there was no land for miles, just the sound of the calm waves hitting the boat. So there I was, sitting on top of my boat somewhere in the mid-Atlantic when I see something. I get out my binoculars and with the light from the moon, I was able to see something bobbing along the water. 
Because of how dark it was, it was too difficult to see just what it was. My first thought was to get my wife who was sleeping, but I didn't want to wake her. The closer it got, I then made it out to be a raft of some type, tied together with bamboo and a tarp strapped to it. Upon this raft was not a single soul. The chances of coming across a raft this far out at sea were small enough of this part of the ocean. The scary part about this was thinking about the person or people who once sailed that raft, why they sailed and how they met their fate. That is what stuck with me.